Good day and good day. Today's verse of the day is Psalm 119, 165. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Today's message is, and give me a second, titled Choose Friends Wisely. And I wrote you in my previous letter not to associate closely and habitually with unchaste, impure people. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 9 in the Amplified Bible. The company you keep, such as influence on your spiritual life, fellowshipping with godly people will help you seed onto victory, while fellowshipping with those who are ungodly will drag you down to defeat. That's why the Bible has some things to say about your friends. That's why it tells you to separate yourself from the world. Because evil companions will corrupt you. Now I'm not talking about ministry. Jesus himself ministered to sinners. You have to mix them to preach to them and to pray for them. What I'm talking about here are the people you choose for friends. If you want to walk in things of the Lord, don't choose friends who walk in the things of the devil. People who talk and act ungodly. Who don't give God any place in their lives. They'll pull you down. As you rub shoulders with them, you'll expose yourself to temptation. You'll get so familiar with sin that it starts to appear less repulsive to you. Sooner or later, you'll fall into it. So if you choose your friends wisely, fellowship with those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart, 2 Timothy 2.22. Expose yourself to their love and their peace. Love Their love and peace. Let their faith rub off on you. Scripture reading is 1 Corinthians 5.9-13. My guess is we'll read it in the BLB. I mean the NIV. (laughs) We'll read in the BLB too. 1 Corinthians 5, 9 to 13. I wrote you in my letter to not associate with sexually immoral people. Not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy or the swindlers or the idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave this world. But now I'm writing you... To you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but is sexually immoral or greedy, or an idolater or slanderer, or a drunkard or a swindler. Do not even eat with such people. What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. Footnotes is 1 Corinthians 5.11. The Greek word for brother or sister is aldephos. Refers here to a believer, whether a man or a woman, as part of God's family. Also in 8.11 and 13. And 1 Corinthians 5.13 is Deuteronomy 13 5, 17.7, 19.9, 21.21, 22.21, 24, and 24.7. 24, so we're going to read 1 Corinthians 5.9 to 13 in the BLB. BLB commentation. And we'll read David Guziak's. Hey Google, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. And we'll do nine. Here we go. <clears throat> the principle of Christian separation. 1 Corinthians 5.9, Paul told them in a previous letter to avoid sexual and moral people, pornea, people. I guess we get the word porn from there. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexual and moral people. I wrote to you in my epistle. Where is this previous letter from Paul? The apostles wrote many letters to the church, which we are no longer have. Certainly such letters were inspired to speak to that specific church or to that specific time but not to all the church for all time. So such letters were not preserved by the Holy Spirit through the church. Keep company is literally to mix up together. In the context of social uh, relations, it means to mingle with or associate with in a close way. 1 Corinthians 5, 10 to 13, Paul clarifies the principle of separation. Yet I certainly did did not mean with sexually immoral people of this world or with covetous covetous or extortioners or idolaters since then you would need to get out of the world. (laughs) But now I've written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or idolater or a revealer or a drunkard or an extortioner. 
not even eat with such people for what I have to do with judging those who are out for what do what have I to do with judging those who are outside do you not judge those who are inside but but those who are outside God judges therefore put away yourself from uh, yourselves these evil yourselves the evil person yet I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world Paul did not want the Corinthian Christians to expect godly behavior from ungodly people to dissociate from sinners and a sinful world would mean we need to go out of the world. Surprisingly, this is exactly <coughs> the approach many people take to holiness and Christian living to get as far away from the world as possible. This was the whole spirit behind the monastic movement in the early medieval church, and it still exists to this day. God wants to share gospel, and he wants to change hearts and minds. Instead, without approving the sin of sinners in this world, we should expect that they would be sinners. It should not surprise or offend us that those who do not know Jesus yet are covetousness or covetous. Literally, the word means those who must have more. It should not surprise or offend us that those who do not know Jesus yet are extortioners, harpax in the original Greek greed. The word describes those who steal by violence. It should not surprise or offend us that those who do not know Jesus yet act as a reviler, describing a person who is a character assassin. But the Corinthian Christians were to expect Christian behavior from their fellow Christians, and they were not doing this. And still, Paul commands that they not even eat with such a person. Um, I was I don't know if I was reading it here or somewhere else, or maybe even in an audio devotional, but basically the 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 Corinthians had some uh, Roman or, or Greek practices of um, sexual immorality before they even became Christians, before the Christianity swept through their temples, right? And a lot of these Christians in this culture were mixing Christianity with this cultural and uh, uh, godless sexual immorality of their past, right? They were mixing the two. <clears throat> Anyways, I'll keep reading. That's my understanding. In the culture of that day, and Paul wanted to stop that, right? And in many cultures today, eating with someone is an expression of friendship or partnership. In some cultures, if a man eats at your table, you are bound to regard him as a friend and as a partner. Paul is warning the Corinthian Christians they cannot continue in Christian fellowship with a notorious sinner who calls himself a Christian. What have I to do with judging those who are outside, those who are outside God judges? Unfortunately, too many Christians are busy, busy judging those outside the church, which is God's job only, and are neglecting purity within the church. Do you not judge those who are inside? Therefore, put away yourselves from the evil person. The Corinthian Christians were failing to judge where they should have made judgment. They should have not winked at the notorious sinner in their midst. And they should have not considered themselves loving for doing so. We must remember both reasons why it is important to deal with this sinning man. Hey Google, stop. Hey Google, stop. Amongst the Corinthian Christians. Not for the sake of purity in the church, but also for man's own salvation. Scripture reading is here. Our quotation is 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5. Dear Heavenly Father, um... This is an area of my life that, that I I maybe have not practiced so much. I don't I don't put people out of my life, God. I I leave that into your hands and your heart, and I do my best to be honest about uh, my life and, and faith and spirituality simultaneously. And I think in a lot of ways, God, I'm just as at at fault as, as anyone else. Um, and I do remember, um, after divorce, I was put, put out and put aside. Um, and God, I, I thank you so much that you deal with those that are the outside. And there's a song by Lecrae called Outsiders, you know, and I feel, I feel like that. I feel like I don't want to give in to a falsehood, but I want to know the real living God. And I want to be where you are. And 
God, you are inside and outside. And I feel like there's a lot of hurting people outside that need your love. I pray that you continue to convict and to change and to mold and shape us, God. I pray that you would you would help me to say no to relationships that are bad as well for me. And that's not an easy place at all for me. <clears throat> because I love it, everyone and anyone. And that was something that, that was challenged yesterday, that love can be so quickly spoken, but can it be um, properly acted out? The action of love. Because in Judaism, they look more at the action than they do at the words of love. Words of affirmation is, is my love language. So words are important, but uh, action to go with it is as important as well, if not more important. So God, help me not just to speak love, but to show love to others. I know that I, I have, I don't think to everyone, but I know that I have to some. And I know, God, that you've taken uh, some far above and beyond, Father. You've taken a seed or a planting, and you've worked with that, Lord. And that's a blessing. It's a real blessing, including these videos, God. Yeah, I love you, Lord. And I love I love everyone and anyone still. And so, God, you give and you take away. I leave that in your hands. And same with me. You give me or you take me away, God. And if ever judgment was to be passed, heaven or hell, I'd rather be you rather than anyone else, God, because you are a righteous judge. I love you, Heavenly Father. I need you, Heavenly Father, every single day. And all my friends and loved ones need you too, God. So I pray that you would stretch out your arms, your loving arms, and you would work into the depths of their heart, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I pray, amen. Have a lovely and beautiful and amazing day. God loves you so very much. Be blessed. Bye for now.